I always joke that the two most important things in Texas are, are Jesus and football. And I decided when I was around 11 that I didn't believe in the Jesus thing. And I was absolutely terrible at football. So I, I just kind of felt found myself as an outcast. 11 years old to be growing up. I grew up in, in a really, really religious type of a home. Um, just a quick context. I graduated kindergarten, eighth grade, high school, and college on the same campus, which is also wow. the campus that I went to church on. And so I definitely understand the growing up in a bubble um, atmosphere. And I find it fascinating that you decided for yourself at 11 that you didn't, that you weren't on board with, with, with the God thing, which, um, uh, I, you know, regardless of your, your family situation in gen, in general, like where you were in that geography, that whole culture believes that it wasn't just like, Oh, when I'm with, when I'm with my family, they say these things, it's like everybody around me believes this. But why do you think that you were able to make that adult of a decision when you were 11? Well, looking back, like I, I never liked I, I always hated church. And I, even when I was a little kid, five, six years old, and, and I never understood why. And I think it wasn't until I was maybe 11 or 12 years old that I started to kind of put things together. I mean, it just, it never made sense to me. Like it never, you know, it was like, I would go to school and learn about math and science and history. And it was, you know, it was like X caused Y and Y caused Z. And then you go sure. to church and it's, and it's just like, random stuff is supposed to make sense you know like I, I it never fit together in my mind and, but I think the the other thing was just I and this is going to sound very cynical and, and mean and I I don't mean this in a cynical or mean way but I started to find that a lot of the people including including my parents but you know a lot of people in that community were very uh two-faced I guess is, is the word you know, it's, they would say things publicly at church, but then you'd kind of go off to dinner with them and you'd hear them or you'd watch what they did. And it was the complete opposite of the things they were saying. You know, I, it's like, I would see my parents uh, talk shit at the dinner table about, you know, the people they couldn't stand at church. And then we'd go to church the next day and they'd be like, oh my God, it's so good to see you and hugging each other and everything. And I'm like, Oh, this is such bullshit. Like <laughs> I, I'm laughing. I'm laughing um, in a uh, and nodding my head vigorously in agreement because I literally was having this conversation. So my assistant that works for me, we grew up in a very very similar environment. We went to the same schools as we were like in third grade, and uh, and we were talking about this exact thing. How I was like probably one of my biggest triggers now as an adult is blatant hypocrisy, and it stems yeah. directly from from growing up the way that I grew up and, and I found the exact same thing to be true is people portraying themselves to be a certain type of individual or person and then not being that person behind closed doors. And like that now frustrates me to no end and I can't stand it. And uh, I'm sure it has to do a lot with the fact that I saw it live itself out in a multitude of ways when I was younger. Um, but anyway, sorry to interrupt. I, I felt like I had to explain why I was nodding my head so much uh, during that answer. No, it makes sense. And it's, it's funny too, that, I mean, you've kind of built a business around relationships. You know, I, I, when I, not to jump ahead, but when I started my business, it was around dating relationship advice. Mm. Um, and one thing I kind of discovered early on in my career is that I just had this obsession for authentic relationships. Like it just, it, it dishonesty or, um, not portraying your your true feelings like it just drives me crazy it's mm -hmm. it's just a personal tick of mine and i think a lot of it comes from growing up in that sort of environment and it's not and i'm not saying this to to trash you know religious people or sure, certain yeah. christians or whatever you know i think lots of human group most human groups do stuff like this mm -hmm. um i think when i look back now i'm actually much more sympathetic to religion now as an adult than i was you know, as a, a teenager or a kid. Um, I, I just think in, in communities like that, there's such a premium put on um, kind of solidarity and conformity mm -hmm. that that it, it's, you know, you, you, people just kind of fall in line and say the right things. And it's just understood that that's what you're supposed to do in those sorts of environments. I didn't understand that then. I just, I, I was like, the adults are lying to each other. What do I do about this? Like, you know, like yeah. that's all I could understand. 
Um, but like now that I'm older, I, I kind of get it. it it's um, some, some cultures really demand that, that level of, um, I guess, solidarity from each other.